that believeth in me though you are dead In the morning, they flourish it. 
break up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. We are consumed by thine anger. By that wrath of the trouble. Brothers and my sisters, we have gathered together here in the sight of God on this day that the Lord has made to celebrate a life well lived and the person and personality of Sister Betsy Curtin, who, servant of the Lord, who has left labor and entered into the land of the Lord uh, in eternity. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise for her life. Scripture reading, Old Testament, Brother David Cleveland, Pastor Beth Rogan, New Testament, Reverend Mitchell Neely, Reverend Mitchell Neely, song, this song, I'll be all right to know her was a lover. God knows she can sing. Amen. <laughs> so we, we're not going to just be sad on this occasion, but we want to celebrate. Amen. <laughs> we want to celebrate her and what she offered to us, the time that God had trusted her upon this earth. Then sharing sweet memory of Delma Morrison, Sam Clark, 1956, Jonathan uh, Jones, uh, Mayor Brinkwood, uh, acknowledgments and appreciation of Brian Kirk White, great nephew. And then another song uh, that Miss Betsy loved to sing, uh, Jesus, Oh, What a Wonderful Child. Amen. Lord, service and men.
for sending her in this way. Could have had her being born in another family, in another area, yeah. even outside of the state. But you brought her to God's South We thank you, oh God, thank you. for the smile, yes. for the laughter, yes. for the joy. Yes. Thank you for the spirit. Yes. We thank you for her living and giving. Thank you for all that she did right here in the street. You've been good to us. So we forever give you praise and glory for allowing Bessie to enter into our personal space. We call her cousin, auntie, mom, most importantly, sister. Look back over the times we see your presence. So now we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we lift up these who come in hope. And we ask now, God, that you would touch us. Give us the understanding that we too must one day come the same way. We don't know the day, we don't know the hour, but we do. One day we must stand before just God. Give an account of every deed done. Like Sister Bessie, we too want to be ready. So search our hearts and our souls. Convict our spirits. And when we receive the call, we'll be able to hear a voice thundering from heaven. Well done, my good and faithful servants. Bless this man of God that was found. And those of us who walk in wicked will We do know that when we stand, we'll be able to say thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Concerning those who have fallen asleep with you, lest you sorrow as you have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him 
those who have slept in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will be no means perceive those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be called up together with him in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. May the Lord, may the family find comfort. I'll be all right, I'll be all right, I'll be all right, and why, oh, yeah, oh, yeah,
friend and friends. I was asked to uh, share a few words for my friend Desi, and thank you for asking. She was a, a lovely neighbor, a friendly neighbor. We did not ask for a young person to be given next to her. My first memory of uh, Miss Desi was um, she returned to the Jackson Blue to Great Court. I was in middle school. And I remember seeing her, I don't know what, it was on Sunday, on when she was going to church, but she was dressed strong. <laughs> she had this pretty blue dress on and a hat to match. And she was clean. And that has always stuck with me. I don't know whether I shared that with her or not. But uh, that's what the kind of neighbor, if she could do something for you, it was for you and for no one else to know all about it. Right. That's just the type of person she was. And she became close with my mother. And it was this girl. And when they retired and uh, didn't have nothing else to do, they started playing cards. <laughs> and then my nephew, Curtis, got into it with them. So him and his wife would come from North Carolina, he would call his desk, and he would say, Get ready. <laughs> and they would have wonderful time. And uh, we will surely miss Miss Betty. And she became close to me. I could talk to her. Whether she agreed with me or not, she said, Well, I got your back. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's just the type of person she was. And we would truly, truly miss Miss Betty. And I know if you really knew her, you knew she was afraid of thunderstorm. Well, <laughs> thunderstorm start. Miss Bessie crossed the road. <laughs> the dog crossed the road. <laughs> she came to visit me uh, one time when the thunderstorm came. I, I think maybe my mom or sister wasn't at home. She told me, she said, You got too much light coming in this house. <laughs> so she didn't come back. <laughs> then she told me, but something you know, uh, a family, so when you cook, you let me know. And so I said, okay, she came a couple times when uh, Melissa wasn't having anything for the family. And we all enjoyed her from, from my family to my sister's family. And we, we really had a lot of good times. And to the family, I know you're going to have days when tears will come. But then something she said or did. Will come to mind and no tears to dry. And you always have a friend in the show. Thank you. Amen. All right, let's wake it up again a little bit. How y'all doing? I'm going to go live in the next. While we're here, this is Brian Crow White on behalf of the family uh, for acknowledgments and appreciation overall. Thank you for the gratefulness. Uh, I want to start off by thanking uh, Mr. Maurice Carwell, grandson, uh, Ms. Ella Kirk Tompkins, my BD. And on behalf of the family of mine, it's Nate Kirk Jackson who we want to express our sincerest appreciation to all who have offered expressions in multiple ways to our family, especially acknowledgement to Dr. Brian Cheek Sr. and the SMBC family, home team, yeah. April Shower Chapter number 184, OES Stephanie Kirk Span, where you matron, Sanders High School class of 1956, Shannon Brown and Franklin and Daryl Sands. Diane Blair, Diane Blair, rather, and Mike Brewster. Me, myself, I want to thank my Bessie for her confidence, yeah. elegance, yeah. and empathy. Those three things are important to me. Um, for me, it's just her celebrating life in different ways. But when it comes to what you truly represent and what you give, those three words, confidence, elegance, and empathy, 
her always being herself and confident in that, knowing who she is, elegance in displaying that to the world, regardless, and empathy in knowing in my display of that, I want to bring you in so that you feel the same. Even though you could just say empathy was like you get five dollars so <laughs> <laughs> she paid. Um, one thing, the term that I stand by in my life, I would say, is self-awareness. And these words represent that. And I not only thank her for that, but I thank, I thank my elders for that. I thank those who come before me because to being self-aware in those words of Bessie represented knowing what you love, knowing what you wanted to do, knowing what you didn't want to do, uh, standing strong on your morals, on what you believe in, being proud of who you are, yeah. and most importantly, knowing why you're alive, and that when you die, you know your reason why. So, I not only want to thank her, but I want to thank all those who have come before me for also representing those same things, but I also am representing the generation after you. I want to challenge you to continue to do so the same way I basically did up to 85 years old. Because we also need to know why we're here. And even in our death, we need to know why we're alive today. So thank you all. Thank you for being here. And thank you all for being Mama in the middle, my best down the 
And so I might do her million dollars. But we're going to do it. Oh, one more shot. Jesus. Jesus. Oh. God said amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Let us say amen one more time. Amen. Truly, we thank and praise God for this wonderful privilege to celebrate, commemorate the 
life well lived and the person and personality of Sister Betsy Thank all of you for those wonderful expressions and remarks. To know her was to love her. To know her was to celebrate her. Yeah. Yeah. To know her was to yeah. appreciate her. Yeah. Miss Bessie was just Miss Bessie. Yeah. And uh, I've had the opportunity to share with this family for the past 33 years. And uh, Miss Bessie has always uh, been in my camp and in my home. In spite of, she would just say, well, Rev, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. She was very committed to our church. Got those she could sing. Amen. She would sing our church happy. And uh, she would also play with our church. She get everybody excited. She would cut the song off. <laughs> Sling a cap back. <laughs> Look out over the audience. Everybody in quick spirit to die down, and then she'll pick it right back up. <laughs> so I told her one time, I said, You know, all you need is a hype man. I call myself a hype man. You know, I said, Next time you say this, that's like that type of church up. I said, I'm going to take a, I'm gonna take a, a, a cake. Well, do you like these to James Brown? And then you're just going to bust back out and start singing all over again. I said, well, Rev, you know, I like that. <laughs> but she would, she would sing us happy with I'll Be All Right. She would sing us happy with Oh, What a Wonderful Child. She sung that this past Christmas by herself. She wanted to sing it. So of course, come on, and she saw me, and she saw me, and her voice wasn't as strong as it used to be, but she just kept on singing. She, she stayed at it, amen. She, she, she did her, she did her thing, and to know her, you know, she, you, you know, she, she was afraid of the storm. So I would call off the time to check on, and she just get so excited. She hear my voice, I just think she just. And that's the storm is going to pass over to the storm. <laughs> and uh, of course, down through the years, uh, Deacon Lyons and Brother Michael Boyce and myself, we, we stayed in contact with her. You know, she lived on the by herself with Harry. And, uh, and so they always, we always checked on her. Mike always made sure her car was running, fix her car. And, you go fix it. And, you know, sometimes the service light will come on, or the check engine light will come on, or the light just come on the wall. And she wasn't going a little bit right around the break, was she? <laughs> she just wanted to make sure that light got on, turned on. Okay, you know, so he would pull up and fix a car and part of the park for her. Try to take good care of her and make sure she was fine. And I, I, I have a special place in my heart for Miss Betsy. Back uh, August 27th, 2023, I made it in my mind. My mom has been sick and my dad has been sick. And I've been back and forth taking care of them. And I discovered that my mom and dad started talking on the phone. They never had. And so I decided to be messy. And uh, I decided I'm going to hook this fancy up with my dad. <laughs> Oh, yeah. August the 27th, 27th, we took pictures. I said, I told him from the whole congregation. I said, because I told him, you know, my mom, I was, my, my mom was talking to my dad, and I told him, I'm talking to my dad tonight. What did I say that for? Well, she went off. He didn't want me to I was like, I'm just for him. I'm just being messy, you know. And I told her, I said, well, I got a memo I'm going to pick him up with. I told Miss Bessie, she offered, she offered a set right there with the morticians in the city. I said, Miss Bess, I'm going to hook you up with my dad. Why don't you do that cow back? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Stan, Miss Bess, you ever yell at this? I said, oh, yeah, my dad ain't going to like that yell. I said, how old is she? said, I mean, it's something. I said, oh, no, my dad's 76. You just pass for him. Oh, no, no. Forget it, forget it. Oh, no. Come on down the house, fall up with 
So we would sit some people. I said, what's up with that? He's spooky. You know, and uh, God love. But you know, uh, as Betsy, I always like being in a relationship. I always wanted to be in a relationship and companionship. She was committed to our church down the years. Uh, she sung in the choir. Uh, we certainly wanted to miss her. She was very, very supportive of our church. She didn't miss church often. She missed she missed more than two weeks. One of us would call and check on her, make sure she was all right. I think when Harry passed, it was a lot out. It's different. Uh, but Miss Betsy, in the 33 years that we shepherded her, she never left church without speaking to me or hugging me. Never left church. No matter how many people were standing and talking, she was just standing in the way she was come told. And uh, I think she wanted me to flirt with her because I would always tell her how good she looked. <laughs> So it's gonna make no sense. Somebody your age you got a head full of hell out there. She had them curls, you know. She had them curls. If you, if you compliment her, she's gonna throw it back. <laughs> she had a great, great personality. And uh, we always checked on her. I didn't know she was sick. She never complained. She just said, Well, I'll be, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. You know, and uh, so sometimes you know, people stay private. Things going on and trust God, and uh, but she's uh, lived a good life, amen. amen. And, uh, she wasn't perfect, but she had her hands of a perfect God. Amen. She knew she had a personal relationship with our Christ, and she is well off. We will see her again. So, we say to her servant, Well done. But for just a few minutes to family and friends, Ecclesiastes chapter. Uh, number three, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. For just a few minutes, I want to leave this stop with you. Just a traveler in time. Just a traveler in time. Let me Again, and be clear, concise, and straightforward to the point when I say today that Sister Betsy was a traveler in time. And it was her time. Every one of us in here today, we are familiar with the word time. Although time is hard to define and describe comprehend in the natural but spiritual, we understand that we are travelers in time. The text would teach and testify to everything, to every season, to everything there is a season, time, uh, to every purpose under heaven, time to be born, and a time to die. Time is a continual Continual sequence of events, existence, life, and living that occurs is an irreversible succession from the past through to the present and into the future. The writer says a time to be born and a time to die. We are travelers in time because we are here today and gone today. After all, we are just pilgrims passing through uh, this barren land. I know sometimes we think, feel, and believe that this earth is our final resting place, but this earth is not our final resting place, but we have another place, a place that has been prepared for a prepared people. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. My brothers and my sisters, all of us have been allotted some time. We have a 
time slot, an allotment of time, an assignment of time, as it is appointed unto men once to die and after death comes the judgment. You and I have an allotment of time, an assignment of time. Your allotment is not my allotment, and my allotment is not your allotment, but we all have an allotment of time. Your time is not my time, and my time is not your time, but you and I sometimes we live as if we have all of the time in the world. Perhaps that's why the seniors you say, get yourself together, because time is filled with swift transition. The Apostle Paul says, For we know that when this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have another building, a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. In other words, my brothers and sisters, time takes the toll on this tabernacle. I said, Time takes the toll on this tabernacle, this tabernacle that we live in, Lord have us, this tabernacle that we live in. Time brings about a change. And after 33 years, 33 years ago, I didn't have to wear glasses, Lord Hammers. How you look at it? 33 years ago, I had a head full of hell. But time, time will bring about a change. Time takes a toll on this tabernacle. Time has the tendency to wear us down. This old building that keeps on leaning. Lady Kobe Bryant played with the Los Angeles Lakers said on one occasion, the biggest mistake we make in life and living on this earth is that we think that we have a whole lot of time. Yeah. And people in this world in which we live in think, feel, and believe that they have all the time in the world. Well, I don't care what your doctor says. I don't care how you eat right, walk and exercise. Your time, Lord have mercy, will come. That's why we ought to love one another. That's why we ought to forgive one another. That's why we ought to be patient with one another. That's why we ought to work it out and work through with one another. But you know, we, we fuss, we fight, we fall out, we go over here and stay. But time brings about a change. Time. Somebody say time. Time is important. Time is imperative. Time is crucial. Time is critical. Time is brief. Time is short. Time is vital. Time is precious. Time is priceless. Isn't it interesting how you want people to forgive you, but you don't want to forgive them? Time is of the essence. We cannot stop time and we cannot hop into a time chamber and reverse time. But time keeps on moving because we are traveling in time. And the writer says a time to be born and a time to die. Sister Bessie was a traveler in time. And for the past 25 years, 30 years, she saw, she saw, she saw, and ministered to this congregation, Amen. blessed this congregation, encouraged this congregation from the prostate. But in the meantime, and in between time, she lived a good life. Yeah. She struggled sometimes. She cried sometimes. She hurt sometimes. She had some good days and some bad days. But she kept her hand in God's hand. She understood the magnitude of time. She understood the size of time. She understood the scale of time. She had a relationship. With our Christ, he knew the scripture when Jesus said, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day for the night coming. <laughs> when no man can work, she worked while it was day. Song number song down through the years. She worked for the one who sent her, Jesus. She witnessed while it was day. She worshiped while it was dead. 
She walked in the word while it was dead. She worked until her work day was over. She had the right perspective in her relationship with the Lord. Now notice, I didn't say she was perfect, but she was imperfect, but she was in the hands of a perfect God who knew how to look beyond her fault and still supply her need. God bless her over and above. With time! Tell us quick, I'm saying for the Lord, I ain't saying I'm right. singing from my heart. I ain't singing for you. She knew her purpose in life was to see. And life without purpose is life without the path worth living. She walked in purpose. She sung in purpose. She lived in purpose. She walked in purpose. She sung in purpose. She lived in purpose. She worked while it was day. Her service, her sincerity, her sacrifice, her support was done for the glory of God. Her giftedness blessed the body of Christ. I said her giftedness blessed the body of Christ. She blessed multitudes down through the years. She blessed people and never told a thing, but she just kept on singing because it was something about hearing her sing. I'll be all right. In spite of the troubles, the trials, the tribulations, in spite of the struggles, in spite of the sicknesses, she would sing, I'll be all right. The writer says, a time to be born and a time to die. We all have a fixed time, set time, a scheduled time, appointed time. Aristotle said, time is the end of one hour and the beginning of another. It's like midnight, the end of one, but the morning, the start of another. Death is the last chapter in time, but the first chapter in eternity, that land of no more. No more sickness. No more sorrow. No more weeping. No more struggles. A land of no more. But you and I are still in the land of some more troubles. Some more trials. Some more tribulations. We are still in the land of some more. But if Sister Bessie was here, her final words would be to the speak to the family is to tell them, I have fought a good fight. Yes, Lord. I have kept the faith and I have finished my course. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And she would say, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Lord, have mercy. This side is so close to the other side that while we're crying, down here, they're rejoicing over there. Death is only a doorway from this side to the other side. Oh my God, now, when every day will be a day of celebration, a day of jubilee. Sit down, servant, and rest a while. Lord, have mercy. I don't know about you, but I want you to understand something. It's not what we die for. It's not when we die, it's not how we die, or where we die. Let me say that again. It's not what we die for, it's not when we die, it's not where we die, or when we die for, but it's who we die in. Yeah, it's who we die in. Blessed are the dead who die. We'll see you in the morning. In the morning, when the dark clouds roll away, see you on the other side. See you on the other side. All a good fight. <coughs> Kept the faith. You finished your course. You did all that God had assigned you to do. Sleep on the <laughs>
Let's pray. God, as we come to the conclusion of this celebration, as we reflect and reminisce, we just want to tell you thank you for this life that has lived a long time. If I reason strength, God Jesus gave us strength. So we look in a familiar place and don't see or you know, hear a familiar voice or face. As we shed tears of sorrow. Remind us to shed some tears of joy because she has impacted and influenced our life in her own way. Her niceness, her gentleness, her kindness, and yet her firmness. I pray now, God, that you strengthen this family. Give them what they need. Each and every one of them. Help them to put their hand in your hand. Keep their hand in your hand. You'll lead us to the right place. Because we may be a do for night, but joy will come again in the morning. So God, comfort this family, strengthen this family. Bless the food in which we are about to receive, our nurse and our physical bodies, bless the fellowship, bless the hands that we carry. Now may the grace of God, the love of God, the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide peace of us his Lord, and forevermore. In the name of God, say amen. Amen. Thank you. 